yeah, thanks for joining us uh, today, everybody. Um, I'm going to present the Metacode X framework today, um, which is a framework for data analysis and harmonization for multi-lab replications of experimental designs. Um, this will be a more of a brief introduction, how we arrived at the framework, what it is, and how we'd like it to see being used, and um, for a bit more details on how to actually use it, um, please uh, uh, feel free to attend our tutorial on Friday at this year's ESMACon as well. So um, where did it start? We were going to uh, reanalyze data from large-scale direct replication projects like the many labs or the multi-lab registered replication reports. And um, we intended to use participant or item level data and we needed that data to be cleaned in order to compare reanalyses with already published results. That turned out to be much more difficult than uh, we anticipated. Um, but before I'm going to talk about the difficulties, um, I just want to get uh, some vocabulary out of the way to make sure that we're talking um, about the same things. Um, so this graphic here represents the basic structure of multi-labs. And when I say multi-labs, I, as, as I just said, mean like um, the multi-lab registered replication reports or many labs. Uh, and all of these have a very similar um, structure uh, on, on some level. Um, and the first interpretable data would usually be item level data um, where each participant uh, is a row and um, each item is sort of represented as a column. And uh, for individual, individual participant data, uh, these uh, rows are still participants, but now the dependent variable has been aggregated to a single numeric value. And these, again, are aggregated to achieve replication uh, level statistics like between group effect sizes um, um, or group variances. And uh, then those replication statistics are um, used to run meta-analyses to aggregate data for each replication project. And finally, a multi-lab then uh, might, uh, might span multiple of these replication projects. Yeah, but despite uh, the very similar structure, um, the solutions they found uh, to document and analyze their data were rather unique. So just a few examples here. Um, the software and users usually are, but sometimes SPSS or other software, the code structure itself was very unique to each multi-lab. Um, so when or by whose data aggregated. Uh, sometimes these steps were taken by the replication sites and we don't find the actual raw data. Um, and sometimes that was done at the uh, replication project level. Um, yeah, and the data files themselves are very different. Sometimes CSV files, SPSS files, Excel files, R data, etc. Um, and if you include the files with information for the data transformations, so like uh, inf information that um, the code sources, um, the analysis or data transformation code sources, you will also find solutions like text files or Google documents um, and probably some more. Um, yeah, so the variation across the multi-labs is quite large. Um, there is little consistency in naming conventions, sometimes the verbal descriptions uh, and other provided details uh, on the data transformations are sparse or even inconsistent. Um, some of the code solutions are really complex, though interesting. Uh, and sometimes we do not find cleaned uh, data sets at uh, different levels of aggregation. Um, so this just results in a lot of detective work for anyone who wants to use that data and makes computation reproducibility much harder to achieve and actually check. Um, yeah, and I want to um, elaborate a bit more about computational reproducibility. Um, by that we mean um, you can run the original code on the original data and achieve the same results as reported by the projects. Um, and there were a few great analyses on registered reports and publications with open data badges over the last couple of years. Um, but the results are somewhat devastating, to be honest, uh, which maybe just means it's um, it may be a lot harder to get there than we, we think about uh, than we think. Um, so some of the results were just uh, only about thirty percent uh, of the um, articles these uh, these projects looked at 
were actually reproducible. Um, the computational reproducibility depends on the skill level of the analyst, which then again uh, poses the question like how much skill is necessary until it's not computational reproducible anymore. Um, most of these uh, analyses agreed that uh, using non-proprietary uh, formats uh, helps a lot um, and providing version control um, so that could be using solutions like RM um, but also using containers uh, and like docker uh, for example um, and also just simple stuff like using relative locations um, so uh, you um, you have to change less um, less file paths just when you're trying to rerun it um, and some of these were already implemented uh, some of these best practices were already implemented in some of the multi labs um, so uh, for example many labs too um, found a package uh, solution for their data transformations even though I think the, um, the package at the moment could be pulled um, so I'm not sure if it's available right now um, there were container solutions uh, a lot of non non-proprietary software was used uh, and also bug trackers which are great uh, just to make sure that um, the community uh, interacting with those projects is visible and um, like uh, so just so we know where people have found errors um, or deviations um, yeah but this is very inconsistent um, across these projects so so our solution to these complications is uh, metapipe x and just to break down the name uh, quickly, it's a pipeline for meta-analyses of experimental data. Um, and these make up more than 50% of the currently published um, direct replication multi-labs. Uh, and yes, the framework consists of three components. Uh, we see on the left the standardized analysis pipeline, which provides guidance to make the analytical structure more explicit uh, and reduces documentation effort. Um, we also created an R package that matches this pipeline, so it analyzes data, it creates standardized documentation um, for the data at different levels of aggregation. And the third component uh, of the framework is a Shiny app, uh, which we can explore data, uh, which we can use to explore data, um, um, MetaPipe X data. Mm, that's a combination of um, replication results and meta-analytical results. And basically, it's just a GI to uh, select and visualize multi-lab analyses. So um, you can also run the analyses uh, within the Shiny app and com uh, combine different data formats. Um, it takes um, SPSS data, um, R data, and CSV files. Um, so you don't have to be able to work with R to implement the pipeline. You can just use this uh, GUI. And the uh, most comfortable version to apply uh, the pipeline is the pull, pull pipeline function, uh, which just takes individual participant data um, as an input, which is uh, depicted on the left. Um, and yeah, then just uh, runs the analysis and creates a full documentation of the standardized pipeline. Uh, on the right, you see the follow structure that is exported by the function. Uh, and in R, this is also provided to you as a nested list. Um, with each folder, you always have uh, the data file and um, according to codebooks, uh, you can make sense of um, the columns in the data set. Uh, and finally, um, what we hope MetapipeX may do, uh, we hope it will reduce effort in analysis and documentation. Uh, we hope it makes your multi-lab data more explorable. So uh, no matter if it's your own data or you combined or simulated data, um, and we hope this fosters interaction between the research community and these types of project. Um, best case scenario, it helps to make the multi-lab format more accessible to primary researchers and students alike, and, and it helps to develop and ask more meta-scientific questions, shed more light on questions around heterogeneity. Um, yeah, and that just adds to the meta-scientific toolkit. Um, yeah, that's it from us, uh, or from me <laughs> today. Uh, thank you for your attention, and please feel free to uh, join our Esmaconf tutorial on Friday.